And this is your one and only Fire Spark 81 with your daily dose of video goodness, and welcome back to another informational Conan Exiles video. Today, we're gonna cover tips I wish I knew when I started playing 3.0. Let's get to it. So we're gonna start off with talking about corrupting your stats. You cannot corrupt your stats. As you see here, we'll put a couple of points in here too and a couple in vitality. You can see I don't have the option to corrupt them. You can corrupt them at any point. They don't have to be maxed out or at a certain point, but what you do need to be is max corruption. The easiest way to do that is to put somebody on the sacrificial altar and withdraw their essence. So do this here to get the soul essence that will instantly put you in max corruption. Once you are at max corruption, you go back into your attributes. You can see now I have the option to corrupt my stats. Now, the interesting thing about this that most people don't realize is that you don't have to keep that 50% corruption. So if I just corrupt to the first stat here and then we come over here to our dancer, you can see I am now quickly losing corruption and it will go down until it gets to a certain point. I will have to keep a little bit of corruption and it all depends on how much you have corrupted your stats. If you've only corrupted a little bit, you can lose most of the corruption. If you've corrupted a lot, it can be a situation where you have to keep full corruption and you can see there we're done losing it and that's where we're at. So we can easily run around with this first perk in vitality and we only have to have that little bit of corruption there. Now do note that you can see I've lost the ability to corrupt my stats again. So if I want to corrupt them even further, I have to once again go get max corruption. So you want a little overboard, you corrupted a bunch of your stats and you've decided you don't like it. Well, how do you get rid of it? You can see up there at the top, I'm 38%, well, a little over 38% corrupted. You can easily get rid of all of this corruption and get rid of the corrupted stats by just drinking a yellow lotus potion. If I just grab this here and I drink it and I go back into my attributes, you can see all of my corrupted stats are gone. Now all I have to do is come over here to a dancer and after a few minutes, all of my corruption will be removed. Also note, that if you have corrupted stats and you want to get rid of them, you can also drink a potion of bestial memory and that will also reset all of your corrupted attributes. As you can see here, we just drank it and our stats are reset. Once that's done, you can once again come over to your local dancer and remove all your corruption. The other thing I wish I knew is that you can no longer stack elixirs or food buffs. So if you take a look down in my hotbar, I have a couple of different foods, a couple of different elixirs. If I hit three there and get an additional 60 health, then say I also want to stack some strength on top of that and I hit four, you can see that once we drink the elixir of might that we no longer have the elixir of vigor. Same thing with the food. If I eat that salted pork, you can see that it gives me a good buff now because there are foods that give decent buffs. I have a full video covering all this in detail that you can check out at the end of this video. I'll put a link to it there and in the description. And if I hit six, it does the same thing and overwrites that food buff. But you will notice that we can have a elixir and a food buff. So that's the only things that you can stack now. You can stack one food and one elixir. And that leads me into the next thing I wish I knew, and that is because of the way that the new buff system works, it makes some of the religious items super, super useful. As you can see here, the Ambrosia gives you plus 10% to strength weapon damage and 40 health. If you take a look at the Purified Flesh, that gives you plus 14 to stamina and 40 health. And the Elixir of Freedom, which you get from the Durketto Shrine, that gives you plus 21 to stamina. And that means to get the absolute best possible start, in 3.0, if you start with Durketto, you can run straight up Noob River and hit Shaman's Rise. That way you can grab the Yogg Religion. Then you can follow up the pathway to grab Shaleback Hollow. That is where you will learn Sorcery. Then you can follow up the river a little further and hit up Mekkama, whatever that is, Spire, and learn the Set Religion. From there, you can head straight over to Muriel's Hope and learn Mitra. And then from there, you can head on over to Sepamaru City and visit Conan and the little bar there and lose the little bit of corruption you picked up from picking up sorcery inside Shellback Hollow. And if you're wondering why we make the stop to pick up the set religion, that's where you wanna watch my in-depth video on the new buff system. That leads me into the next tip, and that is you get 100% resources back when you destroy anything. That means once you've picked up all of those religions, you don't need to make multiple altars, you only need to make one and have a little bit of bone on you as well. Because if we take a look here at the religious altars, you can see that they all cost the exact same amount being 360 stone, 160 wood, and 20 twine, except for the Pit of Yogg, which only costs 12 twine, but costs 30 bone. And that means you can plop down a little chest like you see here, put those resources in it, and provided you're not after upgrading those religious altars, which early game you probably don't care about, you can easily plop down one of those altars, make its respective knife, farm up a bunch of whatever you need to get the religious buff that you're looking for. So in this case, we would farm up a bunch of bugs 
and a bunch of sliver of the unfulfilled to get a bunch of elixirs of freedom. And then we can easily just swap that out, just delete it. We get all of the resources back and then we can plop down, for example, the pit of Yogg. And then we can use that to farm up a bunch of purified flesh and we can put a bunch of those in storage and have them because neither of them have spoil timers on them and we can have them stocked up for our adventures. That will give us nice buffs early on in the game. And the great thing about it is you can actually place these down outside your base, do your crafting in them, and when you are all done, you can just break them down and drop the resources back into a chest that's inside your base, and you can have a nice little tidy base without having a bunch of altars until you're ready to expand. This could also be an extremely useful tactic for situations in PvP where you want to try to keep your base hidden. Most of the spells in Sorcery are relatively useless. However, there is a specific combination that you can use that is absolutely ridiculously powerful. So let's say you need a bunch of iron. Let's make a one-way trip to where I know there is a ton of iron and that is right up and through here. So we're going to come up here and we're going to use coal resources. This is one of the strongest, best spells in sorcery. Instantly harvest a ton of resources in a large area. You can see there is a ton of iron around here and we're just going to harvest it up. You will need the top tier reagents to cast this, which is the cloth pouch, which will involve making some alchemic base. From that point, you're going to click on the, your arcane focus to cast you are going to go shape over on the side here then you are going to escalate that one time you're going to need at least 20 percent corruption and then we are going to cast the harvest and recall minerals in the area around the caster once you do that you slam the ground down and you harvest an absolute massive area of resources we're going to do that one more time here in this area where there is a ton more iron and stone and you can see we gathered all of that iron and stone there and if we take a look that only took me just a couple of seconds Obviously, you'd want to kill all the rock noses before you go casting spells because now I'm super encumbered. And you're like, oh no, now I'm encumbered and I have to take this long trip back to my base. No, we're just going to simply remove our bracelet. You remove your bracelet, you are instantly teleported back to your base, and then in your base, you are going to have one of these circle of powers already ready to go with the resources in it, and you're going to click summon corpse. You can see it's going to take one sacrificial blood in a flask, 50 brimstone, and one glass flask. It is insanely cheap, especially if you are set up next to an area that you can easily bring people in to sacrifice them. From there, we're just going to click craft. And I'm going to let this play out in real time so you can see how quickly you can do this. It only takes just a couple of seconds. I did waste a bunch of time talking there to explain things to you. And there you go. There is our corpse. It's all said and done. And there is all of our stuff. We're just going to hit F to loot everything. And we have instantly transported all of these resources back to our base. That is insanely strong because from there, you can just have a chest to instantly deposit everything in and you're good to go. Another thing I wish I knew from the start is that in 3.0, they changed all of your crafting thrust. So any crafting thralls that make weapon or armor now give bonuses to said weapon and armor. So even a tier one thrall is better than no thrall at all. If you take a look over here, we're just going to quickly craft some medium boots. We're just going to craft one up right now. And you can see that it has 15 to carry capacity. If we come over here to our tier one thrall and we craft the same boots, you can see we have 16.5 to carry capacity. Moving on to the tier two thrall, we are up to 18 carry capacity. Tier three thrall, we're up to 19.5 and last but not least our tier 4 thrall plus 21 to carry capacity and the last thing i wish i knew before starting 3.0 is there is almost no difference between the tier 1 through tier 4 sorcerers for your thaumaturgy bench the only difference between them is crafting speed when it comes to research they all have the exact same chance to succeed or fail at crafting a spell page and that is a 60 percent chance to succeed your tier 1 actually gives you a faster crafting speed and is a better option than no thrall at all by 25%. Then tier two is 50%, tier three 75%, and tier four is 100% faster. So two times faster. All right. And that is going to wrap it up for this episode. Hopefully you found this video helpful and informational. If you did consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other videos. And if you haven't seen my in-depth guide on buffs yet, be sure to check that out by clicking the link at the end of this video. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.